Hi everybody! I know I don't post a lot on this channel, but I actually want to start posting more. I want to ramp up this channel, maybe even monetize it. Really just for fun, I really just want to talk about stuff. Um, my other YouTube channel, my more popular one, is called Salty Sugar Plum. It is mostly a ballet channel, but I call myself Salty Sugar Plum because I don't sugarcoat anything, whether it is teaching ballet or talking about certain behaviors or things in the, in the ballet world that piss me off. Um, I'm known for being salty, being a little abrasive, and basically just talking shit. And I do genuinely enjoy talking shit. <laughs> so I thought, why not do more of that on this channel? I could do vegan food reviews. I could do product reviews. I don't necessarily want to be an influencer. You know, I don't want to have to be annoying or be a brand ambassador. I don't want to have to rely on like a commission from certain companies asking me to review their products. Pretty much everything I, I talk about and bitch about, I'm going to be doing on my own volition, my own free will. Nobody is paying me to say any of these things about their products unless I mention it. It's just me. It's just me talking about stuff and bitching about stuff because that's what I like to do. And if I can get enough subscribers that I can monetize and profit off of that. Uh, great. <laughs> so something I'm really excited to talk about today is um, a Dr. Jart Sika rescue kit. If you've watched previous videos of mine talking about this whole rosacea-like rash that I've had on my face in the past, on and off for a couple of years, you will remember that um, I swore by Dr. Jart's uh, tinted SPF. It's slightly green tinted, neutralizes redness. It also has like calming tiger grass in it, which is supposed to actually soothe the skin and take down inflammation. I ordered this on Sephora. This is actually a pretty good deal. Um, this thing was 42 bucks and it has a value of $70. I don't know. I thought it was worth it. I love Dr. Jart so much. They could sell me like decomposing grass juice from a lawnmower bag and I would still buy it. Um, so I especially wanted to do this now because um, I've been doing a lot of ballet rehearsals and as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of the mask, mask acne, mask knee. Um, you know, I'm sweating in my ballet classes and ballet rehearsals, and I have this, you know, irritation. Exactly, you can see exactly where the mask goes. It goes over my nose, and then right here, right right on this sensitive, soft skin where, where I used to break out before. I'm getting this mask knee. So I thought, what better time than to try out all these calming, neutralizing, uh, soothing, uh, green tinted tiger grass uh, Dr. Jart uh, products. And this has been sitting here for a few days. I got the package from Sephora delivered almost a week ago and it killed me to not open it and play with it right away. But I told myself, no, I'm not gonna open it yet. I'm going to open it on YouTube and give, give an honest review about it. There is only one product in here that I have used before and that is the tinted SPF. I already know how it looks, how it works on my skin, how to apply it. But all this other stuff, this this um, green serum and this like tiger grass cream, I've never tried them before. I've never tried the, the mist, the spray before, so we're gonna see how that works. First thing I'm going to do is um, shower because I just finished uh, uh, dancing. I just finished rehearsal, so I'm kind of sweaty. Hair's kind of greasy. I should wash it. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm gonna wash off my eyebrows, so when I come back, I'm gonna look like a potato face. The only thing that I'm going to do off camera is cleanse my face with CeraVe, the gentle cleanser for normal to dry skin. For the last couple of years, that is the only thing I have been using to cleanse my face. That, that's the only thing that touches my face 
in the shower or when I wash my face in the morning or at nighttime. I'm off to shower, cleanse, and then I will come back and uh, we're going to experiment with these items. All right, so I'll be right back. Ah, I look like a mutant eyebrowless and and makeupless and uh, whatever, let's get to it. So I do have my moisturizer here just in case moisturizer is not in this box. To be perfectly honest, I never understood the order of operations when it comes to applying skincare products. The serum before the moisturizer, I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to follow directions. So in here we have the Tiger Grass Serum, which is this green, dark green bottle. And then a Tiger Grass Cream, which is this white skinny bottle. The Mist to Soothe and Hydrate, which is this big fat bottle. And the SPF is this little guy. I've used that before. So let's see, the serum says, apply a moderate amount onto skin, gently pat to allow for maximum absorption. But it doesn't say when, it doesn't say when to put it on. And then the cream says, cream says, apply evenly onto clean skin. Okay. And then the calming mist, this guy over here, Close eyes, mist over face as needed may also be used as a toner after cleansing. Okay, so I just cleansed. Let me consult the Google real quick and try to find out what order do we typically apply. Cleanse before serum. Serum, we have a serum. So cleanse before a serum, then apply a toner. Wait. No, 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 skip that. So, cleanse skin, apply a toner, or a mist, then serum, then moisturizer. Mist, serum, then moisturize. Oops, I ripped it. I'm the, I'm the worst. I've always been like this, though. Everything that is a box that has a nice little pull tab, I destroy it. Like, even cereal boxes. Ever since I was a kid, it was always an issue. All right, so first I want to know if... <laughs> Gimme. First I want to know if this is a moisturizer. It just says apply evenly onto clean skin. Moisturizes and soothes sensitive dry skin. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if when, when to put this on. Skin care experts seem to agree that the toner goes on and then the serum and then stuff after that. Soothe and hydrate skin may be used as toner after cleansing. Fine, okay. Do I have to shake it? It doesn't say to shake it, so I'm not gonna shake it. Oh, okay. I don't know if I did too much or too little. It smells lemon balmy. Not all of the Dr. Dart stuff smells lemon balmy like this. This smells like lemongrass. Hmm. Um, it's actually not that soothing. Um, it's not burning my cheeks, but my lips are very chapped and it does not feel great on my lips. I don't know how I feel about that being soothing to dry skin, but it smells nice and it did not make anything more irritated. Like, you know, this is just my regular mask acne pinkness it didn't uh it didn't make the redness worse it doesn't burn the red patches it's kind of messy though like it kind of it kind of spit everywhere on itself if that makes sense it looks like it kind of like like drooled on itself a little bit so that might be some some product wasted Smells good, feels good, I don't know, it's too soon to tell. Nothing wrong with it other than it just burnt my lips a little bit. 
It says it repairs sensitive and dry skin, so maybe it will be doing some repairing type stuff. So anyway, uh, the next thing is the serum, which I lost already. Apply an appropriate amount onto skin. Okay, um, I feel like the box said something different. Apply a moderate amount onto skin. Somewhere between appropriate and moderate. Hair in my mouth. Okay. Nothing yet. Come on. Oh, there it is. Ah! Oh! Okay, I got... I, I, eh, eh, eh. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. That feels, that feels really nice. This feels similar to hyaluronic acid. It's kind of like slimy, but in a good way, in a really like soothing, smooth gliding way. Um, the only thing that is concerning me that as I, as I spread this on my cheeks, my cheeks are starting to look a little pinker. Okay, so I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about the serum. It feels nice. It's not irritating, yet it makes my cheeks look pinker. Hmm. So is this moisturizer or is it not? Should I put this on next? Because it says it moisturizes. But then it also says to put it on clean skin. My skin is no longer clean because I just put stuff on it. Should I do it? Should I just try it? Should I just try it and see, see what happens? Little foil tabby to pull off. Oh, come on. <laughs> Give me enough of like a tab that I can actually grip with my fingers. <sighs> Zero out of ten. I can't open it. Ugh, come on. Okay. Let's see what color it is. Okay, so it is green. It's similar to the SPF that I'm familiar with. And it smells more fruity than the SPF that I'm familiar with. Hmm. That seems to automatically reduce the redness. Y'all, my face is so crooked and lopsided. I don't know how, you, how you're watching this, how, how you can look at me for this long. I can't even look at myself for this long. Just don't look at me. Just close your eyes. Okay, so what did I say this was? I don't know. Was it that special? It, it was fine. Maybe 7 out of 10. It's... What if I spray it on again? Even... After the stuff. <sighs> kind of tastes like orange peel cool. This, I don't know. I don't know what to think because when I first put it on, it seemed to make my cheeks more red, but it felt good. It feels like slimy, smooth, jelly, glidey, hyaluronic acid. The way it feels to apply, nice. 10 out of 10. Would probably be like a 12 out of 10 after you put it in the fridge. I like to put my skincare products in the fridge just for that extra cooling, soothing feeling. Um, I don't know out of 10 when it comes to the redness, because when I first applied it, it looked like it was making my skin a little more pink. This was pretty cool. It seemed like almost the second I applied it, it calmed everything. The redness went down. So far, this is my favorite. I mean, this is my favorite like all in all my favorite because I swear by the SPF like this is the thing that cured my face the first time around um but not counting this because not nothing nothing can beat this and nothing can beat the camo drops this is probably my favorite thing in this package instantly soothing instantly cooling instantly instantly reducing the redness um, now, I don't know if I should ap apply m my more moisturizer on top of this. I can try a little bit. I can try a little bit of my regular, this is my regular go-to. Like, this is, this is what I've been using for the past several years that, that has gradually helped restore my skin moisture barrier. So, like, I don't know. I don't want this to fuck up everything else that I just layered on underneath it. But let's see how it feels. 
I mean, it's going on pretty smooth. I don't see any, like, reactions where, where they're repelling each other. You know, there's no, like, peeling or pilling. They're just, it just kind of gliding on over all these previous uh, serums and toners. I don't know. I don't know. It just, it, now it makes my cheek look more pink. It's probably just because I'm rubbing my cheeks too much. They get rubbed with the masks. They get rubbed with my sweat. So first place, I guess this is second place. And I guess this is third place. Let me see if I can get like a before and after. So this was before I even washed my face, kind of sweaty. This was right after cleansing, right after my shower. And this is where we are now. I got a nice little like dewy glow. I got a little nice like dewy glow about me. I look kind of shiny, but I don't know. It, it it did not eliminate the redness as quickly as the SPF and the camo drops do. I'm gonna put a little bit of my moisturizer on my forehead because I did not put anything on my forehead. Other than that, I hope I gave you a little something to think about if you saw this product and, and maybe you were considering buying it, but you don't know what it's gonna look like, how it's gonna act on your face, um, if your skin is anything like mine. I mean, I'm always going to speak highly of Dr. Jart just for the tinted SPF. I know I like hyped up Dr. Jart a lot in the beginning. And then when I actually got to unboxing and using this stuff, it was kind of like a neutral reaction. Do I think it's worth the purchase? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I would have to probably give it a few more days um, and see how my skin adjusts. But it's also really hard for me to tell right now because our in-person rehearsals are more frequent next week. We have like five days back to back in person where we have to wear our masks. So for all I know, my skin is just gonna get worse just because I'm sweating more inside a mask. And you know, it might, I, I don't know. I think that because I have had good luck with Dr. Jart products in the past, and I have good luck with the products calming and reducing redness, I think maybe I should use these things next week when I'm doing all these back-to-back -back rehearsals, when my skin is going to be the most irritated underneath that mask and the sweat and stuff. Um, you know, if I... I I think if after the end of next week, I come out of those rehearsals and the performance is over and my skin still looks like this, if not better, then that means these guys did their job. I think that's a good way to put these products to the test. Is this leaking? I feel like this is leaking. Like I'm just sitting here holding it and, and like I feel wetness on my hand. Why are you leaking? You should not be leaking. It's like all in the cap too. I wasn't pressing on you. Minus a point for leaking. So don't shake this. Don't shake it. Just don't shake it. Just let it sit there. Okay, so it's decided. I'm going to put these to the test next week when my skin is going to be the most irritated, the most raw, the most sweaty, the most frictiony from that stupid mask rubbing up against my face with my sweat and my bacteria. If by the end of next week my face is looking the same or better, that means huge success. That means 10 out of 10. That means would recommend to a friend. I lost the serum again. What the f- Oh, don't tell me it fell between the couch cushions. Oh, I'm sitting on it. And if at the end of next week, I come back looking like a tomato, then fail. We're putting Dr. Jart to the test. If at the end of next week, it looks like I exfoliated with a pizza crust, then, uh, fail. So for the next week, this is my skincare routine. I am deviating from my skincare routine that I usually swear by. Full disclosure, usually everybody's asking me what I do to my skin, what I do to my skin, and I always tell you CeraVe cleanser, CeraVe moisturizer, sometimes hyaluronic acid, and tinted SPF. Now, 
for one week, I am mixing it up. I am doing the tiger grass misty toner with the tiger grass serum and the tiger grass cream and the this this is the same the tinted spf i do that every day anyway so for one week it's different changing it up i just sprained my ankle so no more rehearsals but um i'm gonna continue with the dr jart products for the next few days and we'll do a before and after um ironically this lighting is actually quite flattering i know i have pimples and redness i was just looking in the mirror and i was crying and i'm all puffy um for some reason it doesn't look so bad on the camera i i have like little pimples on my nose and on my cheeks from the mask and the sweat and stuff um I just cleansed with CeraVe in the shower, and I'm going to do the same steps I just did previously, um, adding the CeraVe moisturizer at the end, but I'm also going to add one more step. I'm going to add the hyaluronic acid. I know it, it's probably not necessary because this feels like hyaluronic acid, but I just want more moisture, extra moisture. I want all the moisture. I don't want there to be like any doubt that... I, I skimped on the moisture. According to protocol, toner first after cleansing. I don't know why I sprayed it directly on my eyelids. It's just one of those days, but luckily it doesn't really burn my eyes. Let's try to get it more on the cheeks. The next thing is serum. Feels nice. Feels nice and glidey and jelly. I think I got enough mask knee uh, redness and irritation to put the Dr. Jarts to the test. Even just as my face is now. Without adding all those extra rehearsals. I think even even as red as it is now would be a good indicator of how effective this is. Like I said, I wanted to add hyaluronic acid, and I think this goes on before creams. It's going to go on before this cream. This is kind of messy. Even in the fridge, it's really messy. I've been neglecting my forehead, but my forehead is not really a trouble spot because the mask doesn't go on your forehead. Now this cream, I might be overdoing it for all I know. Might be putting on too much, too much goodness. Oh no, but that looks nice. That like smooths it out. It smells good. This one almost smells a little mintier. I feel like yesterday I said it smelled fruity, but now it smells minty. Okay, so I got my camera in a spot where you can see the things happening on my skin better. I'm having a, some sort of like allergic reaction. I know it might not be too obvious, but I'm, I'm really like swollen and red right here under my eye. Now, I don't know if, again, I don't know if that's just the mask, the mask rubbing on my skin, especially yesterday after spraining my ankle and crying and, you know, rubbing my eyes, rubbing my skin with the mask. But, you know, I do have, like, this weird raised swollen patch under my eye. And as you can see more clearly now, this is what the mask knee looks like. These these are pimples, not the same as the stuff that I, that I had before. I, this is not my same rosacea problem coming back because when my even when my skin was bad all of the times that it flared up and was bad it never presented as like single individual little pimples like this so this is like 100% maskne my skin was my skin was great until we started wearing masks or until i had to start wearing masks while dancing and sweating i'm a little hesitant to apply dr jart stuff on my face knowing that you know, it might actually be making some of the redness worse. 
So for this morning, just this morning, I'm going to do just regular hyaluronic acid and CeraVe and maybe some of the plant-based squalene that I have. I'll come back for an update in the evening and we'll see how this little like swollen spot does. My cat is trying to step on the laptop. Skin is so irritated. I'm so irritated. Why can't I have eyebrows? Is everything after? Maybe my skin sucks because I have Ehlers Danlos syndrome. Supposedly, people with EDS have like elastic skin that bruises easily, and like I bruise easily, but I don't know. I don't know if my skin is elastic. I don't. I don't know. I've I've never gone up to somebody else to compare skin elasticity. Maybe because. I have a genetic connective tissue disorder, and skin is connective tissue. Like, maybe that's why my skin sucks. I don't know. As a kid, it was perfect, and then it just started getting bad. This is what I usually do when I'm not doing the Dr. Jart stuff. This is what I usually do. Ugh, it's a lot thinner. Okay, I guess we'll just live with this for today, see if any of the redness or the irritation goes down, and then maybe I'll, I'll continue playing around with the Dr. Jart stuff. Um, I decided to try out a Dr. Jart uh, soothing Hydra solution sheet mask, just because my skin is just, I just, I just feel irritated. <laughs> My skin feels irritated. Me crying like a little baby last night. Uh, and like wiping my face, wiping my tears with my makeup, on, with the mask and the sweat and stuff. So I'm uh, gonna do this. I don't really even know how to apply it. After removing the film from the mask, apply it to the face carefully. There's a film on it? Is it this plastic thing? Which is the film and which is the mask? I guess this is the mask part? I'm so confused. I really just specifically want to get this like irritated puffy part under my eye. This feels good though. I kept it in the fridge. It was in the refrigerator before I took it out so it's cool and it feels nice and, and soothing and it says... 15 to 20 minutes. You can actually see more clearly where that little puffy, irritated spot under my eye is. I don't know what it is. Like an allergic reaction to some of the stuff in the in the Dr. Jart stuff. Um, just took the mask off. I think you're supposed to just keep this just like rub it in keep it in your skin i have to do like a like a zoom meeting with my company we're doing like a fundraiser like a like a trivia night and i don't know if i'm expected to be on camera so i might have to like cover this up or put a little bit of like um dr jart tinted SPF where the camo drops, but that would be really cool to show you like just how good it is at covering the redness. We'll do that soon, I guess. A little later this evening. Okay, so all I did was eyebrows and mascara. There is nothing on my skin other than the leftover goop toner from that face mask, that face sheet. I did, and then I put on a little bit of CeraVe moisturizer. Um, I have a Zoom meeting, uh, like a fundraising event. I'm assuming my face has to be on camera, so I thought this would be a good time to show you how these work. 
This was what I got in my package, but I don't want to open it yet. I'm going to use this. This is already opened. I've already been using it. They are pretty much the same in texture and function. They are both designed to reduce redness and calm sensitive skin. This is just thicker. Um, some people complain that it's a little messy. Uh, I keep all of my skincare stuff in the fridge. I keep this in the fridge. I would have to imagine if you keep this in the fridge, um, it will stiffen up a little bit and you won't have that like messy problem. This is thinner and I don't know if this is necessarily meant to be sunblock by itself, but it does have uh, SPF 44. It, it, it's marketed as camo drops. I think it's predominantly meant to cover up redness and has SPF in it. Meanwhile, this one is, oh, it's also not marketed as sunblock. This has 30 SPF, but is marketed as a color correcting treatment. They're both great. They're both pretty much the same. Um, I swear by both of these, one is just a little thinner than the other, and this one has a higher SPF. Um, they're both great. I think this one might be a little easier to apply because it's thinner and it comes with a little like dropper. This one's a little thicker, a little tackier, but if you want like thicker coverage, this might be for you. Um, but I'm, I, this is already opened, so this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to explain... Well, you're going to see, first of all, how well it can cover up my redness. I still have this, like, puffy, irritated reaction under my eye. I don't know from what. I don't usually get red in my under eye area. And this is pretty much what I use every day as part of my, like, daily morning time AM uh, skin care routine. You know, I'll wash with the CeraVe uh, cleanser sometimes hyaluronic acid, then I'll do the CeraVe moisturizer, and then I will pat this on top. The application for both of these seems to be the same. You cannot rub this over your skin, you cannot drag it over your skin, or else it will start to ball up or like peel or pill a little bit. So you either have to put it in your fingertips and press it or pat pat it into your skin. Um, I actually use a, a little makeup sponge. I make sure that it's wet first. So it comes in a little dropper. Sometimes it spills around the edge and sometimes I'll even just take my makeup sponge and like blot it off the edge and do that. But uh, I've been doing that a lot so the, the tip of the bottle is actually pretty clean. So I think I actually have to for real use the dropper this time. I just do little dots, let them sit for a minute. I'll get to my nose after. Okay, so you have to pat with this. Like I said, you cannot drag it across your skin or it will make little like bumps, little like balls, little peely pilling like it's weird. You can't, you can't drag it. You have to pat this. And I'm not, I did not apply a lot. This was, a, this is a very, very thin layer. So like, yes, you still can see some redness, but I'm not applying a lot. I don't want, you know, I'm, I'm okay with showing a little acne. Like I don't need full coverage, thick layers. I really don't want to pack anything on too thick on my skin out of fear of irritating it even more. But this does a pretty good job of covering some of that irritation and inflammation. Yeah, I already think the cheeks look better. The redness is already concealed by maybe like 70%. I would say that's a 70% improvement just from those few drops. I'm gonna try to do the tip of my nose and then maybe I'll try to contour my nose because you know my nose is really crooked. I would like to look somewhat symmetrical for a uh, business business meeting, quote unquote business meeting, fundraising event. Maybe if, if the dancers look really pretty we'll get more donors, I don't know. So I figured it was worth dressing up a little bit, doing some makeup, doing some lashes, so maybe I'll 
contour my nose a bit, see what happens. Although, I probably should have done that before applying the sunblock, but whatever, we'll figure it out. Oh, yeah, this this goes on green, but it does change it does change to beige. Like once it sits on your skin for a few minutes, it, it gradually changes. I don't know if this works on people with darker complexion. If it just doesn't match, if it looks weird, if it makes weird patches, or I don't know if it's like subtle enough that it will blend onto a darker complexion and just look like a, a glow, I, I don't know. Um, I'd actually be really interested in uh, seeing some comments from people with darker skin to see if they've ever tried this, if it helps, and would you recommend it? I'm gonna try to contour my nose just a little bit. This is the kind of time we're having a flipped image, a reverse image comes in handy because we don't realize how asymmetrical we are until we see ourselves flipped because you see yourself one way in the mirror and you're so used to it, you know, and you think that's normal and then somebody flips your face around you're like, oh boy, I didn't know my nose went that far to the left. Did I make it worse? I probably made it worse. You should do the septum too. This little guy is so crooked. On my laptop, it looks really subtle, especially with this natural light kind of flooding in and lighting up my whole face. But I'm sure if I were to go and look in the mirror, it would look like I just swiped dark brown on my face and it would look really obvious. But maybe I should just leave it. I'm going down the rabbit hole now. I know this side of my jaw sticks out too much. Why do I care? That my jaw sticks out more on one side. Why do I care? Why do I care? My mouth is crooked too. I will update when the time comes to wash all of this off and then see see what we apply after that before bed. Let's see if, if I feel like sticking to the Dr. Jart products or if I want to go back to my regular thing. Mostly just because I'm worried about this little puffy part under my eye. I don't know if that's like an allergic reaction or if that's just irritation from touching my face a lot in the past 24 hours. So we'll see. Check back in soon. Here we are. The fundraising event is over. The Dr. Jart's camo grass cover up, camo drops, type, oh, what do they call it? Tiger grass camo drops. Did a pretty good job at eliminating the redness, making me look dewy. I might even be a little too dewy, dare I say shiny. Forehead's getting kind of shiny. I know this is different lighting than before. Before I had it right in front of the window and I had the natural light in my face exposing the redness. Now we're back to um, indoor lighting because it's evening time now. Um, but the time has come to, uh, you know, wash off the makeup, and I just wanted to show you, kind of, kind of show you what I mean about how after a day of wearing the Tiger Grass SPF, whether it's the camo drops or the color corrector, how after a day of wearing it, it actually does calm the skin. So in my experience, even after I wash this off, my skin will be calmer than before. So I don't know if you remember this morning when I was putting on skin stuff, my skin was pretty red and irritated from the mask acne and the crying and the wiping my face. So now uh, when I wash it off with just my usual CeraVe cleanser and come back, that redness should still, that, that redness should be less than how we, how we started the day. 
Um, and that is one of the reasons why I think the Dr. Jart color correcting SPF or the tiger grass camo drops, this is, this is the reason I swear by that particular Dr. Jart product, because it does not just conceal the redness, it actually works to reduce the redness and calm the skin throughout the day while you are wearing it. So I'm going to go, uh, cleanse. Uh, you know, wash it off. I might do a little bit of cold cream to get the mascara off because I did pack it on pretty heavy today. But on my skin, only CeraVe cleanser for normal to dry skin, green label. That's the only thing I ever use to, to cleanse my skin. And then right after cleansing, I'm not even, I'm not even going to towel dry. I'm not even going to pat, I'm not even going to pat it dry. I'm just going to come back here and hopefully you will see how the, the redness underneath is less than how we started out today. So I will be right back. As, as promised, just cleansed. I didn't, I didn't even towel dry. My face is still kind of dripping. Um, I hope you can see, again, I know the lighting is drastically different than what we had this morning in front of the window, but I hope you can see that like even that red irritated patch that was under this eye is less noticeable. Um, my mask acne irritation has gone down. The bumps are calmer, less visible. There is less, there is less irritation and, and redness all around. And this is, this is what I mean when I say that the Dr. Jart tiger grass formula you know, saved my skin, repaired it, you know, I put it on during the day to conceal the redness, but then it's also doing, like, some magical work during the day while it's on to, like, calm everything. You know, my face was probably twice this red last night after sweating in a mask during rehearsal and then, uh, you know, crying and being dramatic and wallowing in self-pity when I sprained my ankle and I, I was of course wiping the tears and wiping my makeup and irritating my face and making it angry and the anger is gone the anger is gone um so now I have to figure out what which which Dr. Jart product do I want to end today with I know I said I would deviate from my skincare routine for a few days to see what happens if it makes an improvement. Um, I kind of want to skip the toner today. I'm not crazy about the toner. I've never used toner before. You know, this Dr. Jart skin rescue package was the first time I've ever used a toner. And to be honest, it feels a little sticky kind of like a like a hairspray texture and while it does not burn my eyes and it does not burn my skin it does burn my lips if my lips are chapped so that to me implies that there is something in there that can be an irritant so i think just for the sake of saving my skin and not irritating it more i'm going to skip the toner today so we're just going to do the serum and the cream and I think that's it. I don't I don't want to I don't want to overload on the products. I think that layering on too many products will kind of suffocate my skin and irritate it. So I am going to stick with Dr. Jart. I'm just going to use less. I'm just going to do the serum and the moisturizing cream. We're just doing these two things today. And if for whatever reason I feel dry or unmoisturized, the only thing I will add on top of this would be my CeraVe moisturizer. I have a spot on my nose where I just scratched off a pimple inadvertently when I was cleansing, and it does burn. It does burn raw skin, so... I don't know how I feel about that. Hmm. It really is 
burning that little raw patch on my nose. It's not burning that previously irritated spot under my eye, that like puffy thing that I thought was an allergic reaction. Um, doesn't feel great. Maybe these two things are not for me. Maybe it's just the color correcting SPFs. Maybe that's like the only thing that my skin likes and the face masks, the sheet face mask. And I've also tried the, the rubber mask too. My skin seemed to like those, but these, these are like, these, these are burning a little bit. And I know burning does not necessarily mean bad. Like I know that there are some skincare products that do uh, repair and heal and they do sting a little bit but in my experience anything that stings bad automatically bad anything and everything that any dermatologist prescribed to me that burnt made my skin worse so I am automatically very afraid and very hesitant to use anything that burns so the fact that this is kind of stinging is is making me think like maybe this isn't it I'll let it sit. If the burning goes away, I'll leave it at that. But if after like an hour I'm still really uncomfortable and I notice that my skin is getting more red, I may have to wash this off and just go back to my regular CeraVe. But either way, I will update and let you know what happens. Y'all, I am so stupid. I had to wash it off. I had to wash it off. It was, it was stinging. My face was itchy. It did not feel good. It did not feel like something good. It took, what, two days for me to finally connect the dots? Immediately after I opened that Sika Pear uh, skin rescue package, I pretty much discarded the box immediately, and the ingredients are not listed on those small tubes. But after doing a little research and watching some other uh, skincare professionals, I learned that um, niacinamide is pretty high up on the ingredient list. And while for most people niacinamide is really great, for me, it irritates my skin. I don't know why. It doesn't do anything to help bring down the redness. It makes my skin red. And also, there are apparently fragrances in these Sika Pear products. I cannot do fragrance. I cannot do fragrance. Anything with fragrance irritates the skin. And let's not forget, years ago when I first started having these problems with my skin moisture barrier and it looked like rosacea and I was trying all of all of these methods to help it, I tried everything from the natural to the artificial to try to help my skin and I was I was treating myself with essential oils and tea tree oil and lavender oil and who knows what else and in that time, I probably made myself allergic to essential oils. So, you know, I went ahead and applied that new Sika Pear Rescue Kit stuff, thinking I was doing all sorts of great stuff for my skin. And you know what? This shit under my eye was probably an allergic reaction. Like, that's probably what it was. I, I probably just fucked up my skin or took like five steps backwards in just those few days that I was experimenting with those products. This morning, I'm waking up wondering why why my eyes look more wrinkly than usual. Like, why does my skin look worse than usual? Because of that stuff. Because of that Dr. Jart Sika Pear stuff. Now, for some reason, the tinted SPF and the camo drops does not irritate me. For some reason, maybe there's less fragrance, maybe there's less niacinamide, maybe it's just the minerals in, in the skin protecting factors, like maybe that does not irritate my skin, or maybe th there are no ingredients in there that I have made myself allergic to. So I will continue to swear by the SPF. That does not bother my skin, but that, that mist, that I said was burning my lips. It's burning for a reason because there's something irritating in there. Same deal with the serum and same deal with the cream. There's something in there that smells and irritates and clearly causes an allergic reaction. So uh, we gotta call it quits. We gotta call this video quits after just two days. It's just, 
it's not worth it. Like you all saw how much trouble I went through with my skin and, and how many tries and how many months and years it took me to finally figure out and fix my skin. I am not going back there. I'm not risking it. I'm not risking it. I am not undoing all of that work. So I have to stick with boring, fragrance-free, CeraVe and the ordinary hyaluronic acid seems to be pretty great. That's what I did. I, I, my face was so itchy from that Dr. Jart stuff. I washed it off with the CeraVe cleanser, green label, like I said, I swear by that. And then I put on the ordinary hyaluronic acid, no fragrance, no nothing, and then moisturized with the CeraVe uh, moisturizer, which is, which is just what I have to stick with. I can, and you know, maybe I can continue using Dr. Jart for just the SPF, but it doesn't look like I can use Dr. Jart anything else. You know, I've, I've had pretty good luck with the rubber mask, I guess, because there's no fragrance in there. There's nothing really irritating in there. There's no reason for it to smell like anything. So I did have good luck with the sheet mask and the rubber mask. You know, I had had such high hopes for the tiger grass products because those are hyped up to be so calming. And, you know, I wanted to be a fangirl and hype up the tiger grass line, but I think they just I think they just fucked it up. I think they just fucked it up with adding those extra like essential oils and fragrances because um, they are irritating and they might not be irritating for everybody. You know, there are probably some people that have no problem putting that stuff on their skin. There might be some people that swear by all of the tiger grass products the same way I swear by the tiger grass SPF and the same way I swear by CeraVe, you know, but for me and for all the crap that my skin has been through, you know, my skin was trying to warn me like, hey, this sucks. <laughs> don't, don't use that. We don't like this. Remember, we've been through this. Why are you doing this again? So I got to call it quits. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that, <sighs> I don't know, it was kind of a waste of money. It was a fun experiment. Uh, I'm sorry I have to call it short. I'm sorry I cannot make use of these products the way that I wanted to. I really wanted them to work, but like I said, it's just not worth the risk. It's not worth irritating my skin again. Um, so I'm going to try to do some damage control and just use non-irritating, fragrance-free, boring, uh, you know, my regular old CeraVe. I'm, I'm not going to touch that tiger grass cream or serum or mist. I already feel like just by taking that off my face and putting on regular CeraVe, um, it already looks calmer than before. So fingers crossed my skin doesn't hate me tomorrow. Fingers crossed that it gets better and that I didn't just undo two years of progress by playing with this stuff. I guess I will do one final update tomorrow morning before editing this whole video and posting it. So we will see what I look like the next day, uh, a day after not using the Dr. Jart stuff to see if there's a difference because yesterday my skin was pretty red and I think the Dr. Jart was contributing to the redness rather than fixing it, which is what I hoped it would do. But I don't think that's going to happen, at least not with my skin, not with all the shit that my skin has been through. We'll check in tomorrow and then I'll post this whole thing just for fun. Hey everybody, I have the laptop set up in front of the window so we have the natural light back on my skin. All I have on my face right now is eyebrows, mascara, and my usual moisturizer, CeraVe, and I patted on the Dr. Jart's camo drops. So I went back to my normal, regular skincare routine, and already I think the redness has improved. That inflamed spot that was under my eye is gone. I still have a little bit of like mask acne irritation on the tip of my nose, but I'm not surprised. My cheeks are no longer pink. Even before I put on the camo drops, I really did not have any pink cheeks this morning. I do still have like one or two little like mask pimples, but again, it's not a red irritated rash. It's not puffy. I stopped using the Dr. Jart serum and the cream, so there's no more of that like fragrance or added oils and stuff irritating my skin.
So, uh, unfortunately, even though I really wanted to like all these tiger grass Sika pear products, um, I, I can't, I can't take the risk with my skin. My skin doesn't like the added fragrances and essential oils. I'm a little disappointed because this is a product that is marketed for red irritated skin. And while their tiger grass color corrector with the SPF and their tiger grass camo drops really does the job, really like hits it out of the park when it comes to red irritated skin. These other products, the serum and the mist and the cream, they just, I, I just, I can't. And, you know, it might just be me. It might be my skin's personal preference. You know, it might just be hypersensitive after all of the shit that it's been through the past, like, five years. Just because my skin hates it doesn't mean your skin will hate it, but... If you really have fragile, delicate, like broken skin that is just so sensitive and so easily irritated, uh, I cannot recommend this for redness or inflamed, irritated, delicate, broken skin. It just, it seemed to do the opposite for me. It just seemed to make it worse. So I stand by what I said about the color correcting SPF and I stand by what I said about the camo drops. Definite yes, I still 10 out of 10 recommend that to a friend. It just seems that all of the other Sika Pear Tiger Grass products kind of missed the mark. So thank you for watching this long, exhaustive video. I hope I covered everything, and I just hope it helps you make a more informed decision. That's what this channel's about. That, that's what I want to do with this channel. I just want to talk openly and honestly about everything on my own volition. I don't want a company paying me to say certain things about their products. I want to pick the thing, and I want to say what I want to say. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching and stick around. I'll see you next time.